I'd like to open the Board of Selectmen meeting um, tonight on um, January 20th at 6 p.m. Oh, ninth. Oh, the 19th. I'm sorry. Um, January 19th, 2021. Um, this is a Zoom meeting, so Trevor will read the Zoom. Okay, so uh, welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting for January 19th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, the location is the main meeting room, municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, mm -hmm. South Deerfield, Mass. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Uh, remote meeting connections are noted below. So if you're on this meeting, you probably found us through our webpage and to the agenda. So if you go on to our town webpage, you'll see our meetings and, and the calendar over on the right. You can always click on our agenda and there's a, a link there for people dialing in. You can dial 312-626-6799 and then enter the meeting ID, which is 911 604 1580. There is a passcode should you need it. Most times you can just enter, you know, pound and get right in, but the passcode is 570012. Um, we're also, again, we're on Zoom and there's a link there on, on our home page. Um, so people who are on, online or on their phone, you can uh, please mute your line, which is star six for landlines, unless asking a question or commenting. All attendees should wait uh, to speak until other participants are finished, but um, we do get a lot of background noise, and so anytime you can mute your phone and catch yourself from saying something over the airways would be great. Um, and then just unmute if you want to ask, which is also star six. So the meeting's called to order, and uh, I'll turn it over to Carolyn. Thank you, Trevor. Um, I think we'll start. Uh, I th believe we have um, a recreation uh, representative yeah. here. Yeah. I think, thank you. I just also wanted to mention that Rob Eckerman's here from the of uh, the chair of the chair right of the uh, recreation department is alongside us here you could um probably see him online um uh, in a town hall he's far off to the right here and speaking through the the mics okay so rob why don't you start by um talking about um what the recreation department has um identified as needs for the community and we can summarize that and then go forward with our discussion Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I've been on the Recreation Committee for about 12 or 13 years, and um, one of our focuses is always trying to find more um, avail availability for land, um, for fields, and for gatherings, and all sorts of recreation um, kind of activities. And if you look at our mission statement on the, um, the town website, it clearly states it right in there in the first sentence, so that that's one of our first priorities. Um, and so um, I met with uh, Chief Petrarch last year, and he uh, threw some ideas around, and he started to um, spearhead this project. And the Recreation Committee had a meeting this past uh, fall, and we voted um, to unanimously um, support this project. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now, and um, I'd love to hear the town's feedback on what they're looking to um, you know, have over at this site. Okay, um, John, would you summarize a little bit of what you have heard um, from the last meeting and from um, different comments you know, over the last few months? Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, so over the last few months, uh, especially the last meeting, what we heard was uh, that the parking lot may be too big some of the residents would like to um to scale that back so it's um taken uh note with our engineering firm who's come up with a couple different concepts around that moving the parking lot around and shifting some ideas so i think that was the biggest takeaway last time um i know some of the neighbors have expressed concerns about the band shell in the way in which it's facing and noise related issues so I think we certainly have to mitigate that as well. Um, but overall, I think we're progressing forward. There's uh, been additional surveying activity over there. 
just delineating some areas for the engineering firm. And uh, they were recently over there and dug uh, 12 test pit holes to look at the soil down several feet in the ground, which will ultimately go into the stormwater management plan. But the key right now is to figure out what the residents would really like to see over there and what they don't feel is really valuable as well. So we want to try and make the neighbors as happy as possible. Um, so, you know, everybody comes out with a win-win situation. That's kind of where we're at today, Carolyn. Thank you, John. Um, I, I think it was clear from the last meeting and the, uh, that we needed more discussion. People are definitely not happy with the parking lot. And actually, I have to say, I'm not supportive of paving over our park area myself. So um, I'm gonna open it up so that people can give us um, more discussion on this. And we'll try to direct the conversation towards um, making a list of what people would like to see or comments on what we are proposing already, sort of. Again, this is a very beginning process. I just keep wanting to reiterate. Thank you. Um, do, do you want me to share any views? Oh, somebody, maybe somebody already is. He okay, good. Is. Great. Tre Trevor, can you manage who um, is speaking? Uh, yeah, I think so. Alex is on as well. Uh, let's see. I'll go to participants. Um, yeah, M Alex may need to do that. I don't see any. I don't know if the hands will be raised based on this. Um, Chief, are you sharing right now? Or is it somebody else? No, I'm not sharing. Okay. Who brought uh, this up? Oh, someone brought yeah. something up. Why don't I, um, do you want me to share any uh, views of the lots at all? Or do, Chief, any particular thing you want me to bring up? Does um, I have the access to all that? Trevor, could you bring up what John had emailed us earlier on the different concepts? Sure. Um, let's see. That might help generate some conversation. Okay, so there there are several different kind of ideas. If you can see my screen right now, there are several different plans that we are looking at for um, possibilities of moving parking and figuring out you know what we would do on this lot. Again, these are all concepts. These are just gathering ideas. Nothing set in stone. There's no specific thing here that needs to happen or not happen. Um, but this this one here, you'll notice. Um, the entry entryway coming in and putting the kind of the parking in the middle of the two fields. Um, we still have, I think, a band shell kind of over in this area, picnic tables and stuff. This is uh, the original plan had, you know, kind of bus parking and then all the parking in this area. Uh, I, and then um, and then our fields kind of further down. This is just one idea would be to kind of put parking in the middle um, to see what people have. There's two bus lanes here for bus parking here. You know, the one concern I have of this is that you've got kids kind of crossing from one field to the other. And, and it does, you know, if we want to do a big, you know, have a bunch of people out here, it really does limit the size of your space, um, you know, uh, before the parking was over here. So there's other other concepts and we can we can bring those up as well. Um, here's another concept of uh, of doing, a, you know, the parking along this side. Uh, and then still some bus parking back where we had it originally. So this is a little bit different instead of it all being right here, a little bit more lines up straight when you kind of come in. Um, this is uh, another, uh, another idea. I think this is very similar to what we had originally where you came in and parked um, a little picnic gable area over here. This, I think this is a, kind of more on the original plan. Band shell is kind of in the middle. This opens up the whole area. The black line you see going around would be the walking path and nature trail and possible future exercise equipment in different areas as it goes around here. Um, all the plans would have some, some aspect of that. And then I think this last one here, um, uh, I guess this just shows more in green where the parking would be, where the band show would be, a picnic area is over here, getting away from the, the residents for parking and kind of leaving it on the side over here. Um, again, with the, with the walking all the way around, um, to see if there's any others here. There was, that was the split. I may jog, jog back and forth here a minute as I go through these. 
Um, this one again had the, had the path going around in yellow. You can see, you know, a hike, a walking path, an exercise path all the way around. Again, parking in the middle. Um, this was looking at possible, you know, uh, if, if we're, we we don't have access through here, which you know we had really hoped for uh, for our students and safety, but um, we would probably put in a. Um, a parking, you know, a sidewalk, you know, safety on this side of the street. There is sidewalk on the opposite side, but then you've got kids crossing the road. So we'd probably put a part, uh, a sidewalk down the left side, or I guess the west side, if you're heading north, um, to get access to the to the park from the school, as the schools to be using this a lot. Um, I mean, I, uh, I, I guess what I, you know, I guess I'll just speak a little bit of what I would like to see in this in this space is um, the main thing I've wanted to see is a place to come together as a community. Um, we, you know, this world has been fractured immensely from the pandemic to politics and every other thing. Um, yep. and, and we would really like to see um, our residents come together and have a place to learn from each other, share experiences, um, share the joys in life, um, uh, watching their kids play, listening to some music, um, you know, and I, for me, I really, what I really wanted to see was a place for our, ch our children to learn as well. You know, we have a lot of area in the woods here. Again, originally we had hoped um, that we would have access to areas where the students could do research projects out here um, about nature and, and all kinds of different things that they could learn, you know, wetlands and, you know, how, insects, uh, you know, wildlife, how trees grow, all kinds of educational opportunities could be had out here. We still have some areas along the edge that we could still do some of that um, in the walking path. We'll do everything we can to kind of create gardens and, and different areas to kind of work on that. Um, but so so it's for, for me, I see a place for us to gather to have joy in life um, and then to um, and then to tie this in a bit to the school life and, and our town life. And, and I know there's other ideas of, of dealing with um, walking paths. We're working on the common. We're working on, you know, we obviously have to, we're going to look at the library, our senior center, town hall. You know, we have all kinds of projects that are going on. And I, I think this kind of lends into tying this all together into a place where our town is um, exercise friendly, walkability friendly. Uh, people can, um, you know, Seniors or anybody can just get together with grandma and take a walk uh, around town um, and have a good loop of an area to go through and nice places to be and stop off and watch a game or, you know, stop off at the, at the school and watch a, watch a softball game, go over to a soccer, soccer game or, you know, there's all kinds of different activities that could happen, um, you know, with a small concession stand either at Frontier when they're doing events or over at the park. Um, we could we could really make a nice place to live for our community, um, and I, I think it's a great spot to do it. It's close to school and it's in town. Um, there's not there's not a lot of property around to be to be able to do something like this, and we wish we could expand on this, but this is what we have at the moment. Anybody else want to speak? Let me open back up to the view so I can see everybody. Um, Alex, can you see if there is anyone raising their hand? Yep. Um, I I don't have that view, so could you just call on them, Alex, please? Yep. I, I raised my hand a while ago. Oh, oh. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead ask me? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm attorney John McLaughlin. I represent Ms. Rathbone who owns all of the property to the south of the proposed uh, project. Um, a, a couple of issues. Um, the, the number one issue is, um, as I started to look into this project, I became concerned that it looks like that um, the lot itself uh, can have no building on it at all whatsoever. Um, I've asked your attorney to try to get back to me on this. When the lot was purchased, the plans for the lot on the um, public registry of deeds state that this is not a building lot. Um, now the town um, doesn't need a special permit to build and doesn't need a site plan review is what it appears, but 
the town still has to obey the regular bylaws like everybody else. Uh, and for frontage in this, in an industrial district, you need 200 feet. Um, so, you know, we, we think that this, trying to do this entire project with a tiny little frontage next to residential zones, it wasn't made for this. And indeed, you may not be able to build anything on this. It may be like community garden land. Um, it says it's not a building lot, and that's because it doesn't have frontage. And as far as I can tell by looking at your bylaws, the town, this town, some towns do say that the town doesn't have to obey its own bylaws, but this town hasn't voted at town meeting to do that so far. But to me, an initial glance, and I got some documents from your town clerk, who was very nice, and you gave me uh, the, what I was looking for. It, you know, I really need some response from your attorney. Uh, I wrote with a bunch of questions over two months ago, which haven't been answered. And um, excuse, me, excuse me, I just want to cut you off because number one, we're just starting the process. We don't have any idea what we would choose to um, develop or not develop here, um, playing fields or whatever. And also, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And so, until we get to the chance, you know, our staff is very limited and um, we have no ability to answer questions at this point because we're not sure what we're going to do. Now, I know Judith had put and applied for a commercial building permit in July. And if she's changed her mind about developing her property, we would certainly like to have some conversation because from our last meeting, very clear that people are concerned about the parking lot. I myself am not supportive of paving everything over or having a parking lot there really. So um, I supported this project because um, Charles Mark himself had was willing to work with us you know, wanted the band shell with its entire name on it. And we we are intending to move forward, but we have not had the time or the energy to put forward um, at a faster pace. So you'll get your questions answered. These are legal questions. When we decide at what point we would like to um, have a, a complete plan, then we can answer some of your questions. But it's, we're not spending money on a lawyer. We're not gonna answer your questions because we're not sure what we can do at this point. Now, certainly would love to reach out with Judith and um, I don't know what her commercial permit, what she's intending, but I would certainly, just some connector would save us from having to develop any parking. So that would, um, I really want kids to have some ability for educational opportunities and projects, especially, you know, the pandemic is going to have us outside for at least a while longer, if not into school year. So if we can have some kind of connector, that would be lovely. Um, so we'd love to have, and we would want to work. With them. So um, when, when we get to the point we have enough information to know what we're going to do, we'll be able to to your questions. These are legal questions. That's not what the purpose of this tonight. We are trying to gather information, feel, try to figure out what the would like. Um, how would you afford? I hear you. Okay. So, so that being said, with with the understanding that right now I don't believe you can build anything here at all. But aside from that, Excuse okay. Me, that's your opinion. Right. And that's a legal opinion. Right. You have. That's not our opinion. That's not the opinion of our lawyer. Um, but we haven't discussed it. So right. I understand. I answer you formally, get to the point of, of trying to understand exactly what we want to do going forward. That, that's fine. Well, with, uh, knowing that that's still and in the background. Like to, and we would love to work with Vera and Judith both on trying to find some kind of well, then the, the issues, if it is going forward and getting built, there's some big issues. The, the questions we have, one big question is hours of operation. You know, yeah, when it, when Ed, listen, this is so premature. We have no hours of operation because we have no ability to even know what we're doing. So if you want us to say it's 24 seven, you know, <laughs> fine. But, you know, we don't know what we're doing here with this land. So way too premature, can't. John. 
we cannot tell you where the bathrooms are going to be located. We cannot tell you where, you know, where, what our hours of operation are. I mean, please understand. We're starting the process. There wasn't enough time in our last meeting. We tried to do it earlier in our select board meeting, but it was, to me, was unsatisfactory. It's very hard to have a public meeting on Zoom. We're trying to get people's ideas. We need to have more. Um, well, one thing I would suggest is that because it seems to be like a moving target, you, the neighbors don't really know what to say they like or don't like because there's no proposal from the proponents. Um, it's just moving around a lot. Uh, perhaps if you... We are looking at a soccer field. For, we are looking at playing field for sure. Okay. That's that's the only thing that I'm probably. So, can I interject? A second? Yes. So really, John, the, the the main thing is we're here to listen to the, what the residents want and don't want, and 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 that'll that'll determine what we when wind up building, and when when we have uh, when legal review is complete on the property, we'll know what we can and cannot do. This is really a listening session. It's, it's been years before we've had an opportunity like this to provide a park and fields for our, for our residents and our children. So I, I, I'm, um, we're looking to listen to the residents, um, not just the people who live right next to it, but the whole town, people who live right next to it and the whole town community, what they would like to have for a park. Hopefully this is a property that can happen to have a park on it. We'll find out when legal review is completed. But all the ideas of like when it's going to be open, what color the fence is, how tall things are going to be, none of that, all of that is concept. And, it, and it, it's ideas that we have but don't really have solidified yet. We have pulled no permit. We have no, no, um, no plan really going forward other than gathering ideas to find out what we would like to have here in the future if possible. So that's what we want to hear, not what the hours are or what, you know, if there's a gate on the front of it, that kind of thing. It's too, it's too premature. There will be time in other meetings to find out, you know, once we have a plan figured out, we'll have, we'll have opportunity for the public to say, you know, we would like Arborvitae or something like that for, for privacy. I mean, I'd love to hear it now, but we don't really know where it would be because we don't even know where the driveway would be if we can have a driveway. You know, there's a, there's a lot to do down the road and it's not, you know, this isn't going to be built tomorrow. So I, I just want to, the, 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 premise of tonight, our last meeting, possibly a meeting in the future here soon, would be to just keep gathering information until, you know, we can all get in a room. I'd love it if we could all get in a room and talk together or on the site and talk together. Just this pandemic has been de detrimental on getting people together and sharing ideas. This is just a horrible way to do it, but it's the only thing we have right now. But if Judith is willing to, um, I mean, if she's changed her mind about development, she not meeting, she's she didn't want development. So if she's thinking about doing a, some kind of development, we would love to work with her and see if we could um, figure out some connector or something like that. Well, we do, um, you know, obviously we can talk about that, but, but I mean, I think these are, are separate issues right now. What, I, what I'm concerned about is we spend a lot of time and effort uh, giving our input and, and you responding, which I appreciate. And, and it's all for not if you're, because I, I'm not positive. <laughs> I mean, if, that's what we do. <laughs> John, John, thank you. We'll, we're going to listen to input from our residents and, and see what we can come up with. Okay. When, when, when will we be hearing from your lawyer as to the issues regarding the buildability of the law? When, when we, yes. So at some point, when we've decided what we're going to do, we'll, we, we'll enter. Um, give our side of the, our, our opinion on our side. But um, at the moment, until we know what we're going to do, we're not spending any money. Sorry, I'm not going to get an answer. I see. Okay. Right. Well, obviously, if you're going to build it, my client would like it as, you know, much smaller and um, taking into account the considerations that you're very close to residential properties. This would not normally be a lot. If I was a, a commercial developer coming in here, I'd have trouble with a special permit. And those are the factors that we, we would consider uh, the access, the lighting, the fencing, 
the uh, vegetated uh, borders, um, the hours of operation, and the especially the access. I mean, are they are the bathroom? Do you plan on leaving these bathrooms open all the time? So Thank you, John. Can, Thank okay. you. All right. be, okay. That would be concerns. That would be concerns of all residents. Okay. We would certainly be sympathetic and understanding of of those concerns. So, um, yeah. We we'll, when we get more information. And we'll all right. Bring forward, try to answer them, because those concerns are for of all members and all. It, it will have, so we will try to take every care to have the least. Possible. Um. So, Alex, is there anyone else that has their hand raised? Yep. Um. Someone named uh, South Deerfield resident has their hand up. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes we can. Um, Carol and Mrs. Judith, who told you that I applied for a commercial permit? Um, um, our building inspector received an application from you in July, I believe. Are you Are you kidding me? I mean, how can you How can you say this? It's com It's a complete lie. How can you say these things about me? It's completely untrue. I never applied for anything. I never oh. made an application for a commercial permit. Well, and the fact I'm that sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. I thought. And now apply. anybody who listens to the meeting up to this point and then turns it off is going to think that I applied for a commercial permit. I just can't believe this. Okay. I'm Thank sorry. you, Judith. Thank you, Judith. I'm sorry. Yeah. I miss was misinformed. Alex, is there anyone else? Um, not at the moment. Okay. Um, well, Gail's raising her hand, Carolyn. And oh, okay. I'm sorry. Gail and Michael are right in front of the project in of itself. So if you're looking at your screen right now, all the way at the east side of it, their house borders the actual parking lot. So All right. uh, I certainly would uh, like to hear sure. any input they have. Okay, mm. thank you. Can you hear us? Yes, yes we yep. can, thank yep. you. Okay, um, since the vegetation and all the bushes and stuff were rototilled and like kind of destroyed and taken away, we've had some flooding in areas that we've never seen flooding before um i'm a little worried about who would be responsible if we ever had some flood damage mm -hmm. because i mean it's obviously not my choice to have this done but I, i'm just worried about you know what if that water gets even further when you pull out all the trees directly behind us because i think the flooding has happened because all of them weeds and stuff soak up all the water. And since they've been pulled out, I think the water's been coming my way. Um, okay. I even have pictures. I took pictures. Oh, if you can share them, that would be great. Yes. Yeah, um, if you could share them, Gail, that would be great. And, and I know that when, uh, this is Trevor speaking, I know that when we, when and if we do um, develop the area, the, the stormwater management would be a huge part of how we would address the property to make sure that you know, water didn't didn't enter onto another property. The whole idea is to manage the water that lands on the on the ground and and manage um, you know any, any flow of the water. So, if you could share those with us, um, either to I don't know how you can email them to John or me or uh, town administrator. We'd love to see them and just make sure that we're aware and we have our engineers are aware of kind of what we're seeing now. Um, okay. Just so you know, because we've had some really heavy rain recently, and it, it's probably I'm sure it looks different. Um, and, and you're, you're right, maybe with the vegetation gone, you're seeing it flow differently and, you know, not get sucked up as much. So we'd want to know that for sure as, as we look to manage the water on the property to make yeah, sure you didn't have any issues in the future. Most, most engineers, what's required by regulation is a 25 year storm retention, but that has always, I am so concerned about flooding. I have years of being worried about that. So when we would do design we would do nine for the hundred, a hundred year storm, and we would make sure that water was truly retained on site. Um, a lot of times, the receiving it's a receiving area, and um, for water, that's not calculated. We would make sure that it was calculated. Um, 
only because I that I'm always so concerned. And it is not really usually addressed very well with developers. And um, the impacts are, are really are so um, devastating. So we will make sure that the stormwater plan is designed to 100 per storm, not to 25 per storm. I, I will promise you that. So Carolyn, your uh, your audio yeah. is quite intermittent at this point. Yeah. Jesse Marino to... is on our uh, one of our engineers, and maybe Jesse can talk about you know the difference really quick and just extremely over broad okay. of the twenty five and a hundred year stormwater management plans, and you know uh, when we get into full engineering of this site, that actual stormwater management plan and the notice of intent that has to go through the conservation commission and all this has to be addressed. Jesse, do you want to jump in at all? Thank you. I'm really sorry about my computer. I appreciate it. Thank you. OK, no worries. Sure, I, I can jump in. Um, John's exactly Thank you. right. So this site here, because we have the presence of uh, wetlands and a buffer zone here, um, the state stormwater um, management standards would apply. Um, there's also, uh, you know, to the extent that the, uh, uh, what permitting is required in town too, there, there may be some town bylaws that, that apply. Uh, but that's exactly right. When you uh, develop a site like this, uh, we certainly would have to look at um, the effects of drainage. Um, one of the good things about this site is that um, there's minimal clearing required. Um, you know, if you look at the site to the south there, um, that's all treed. This site, um, the majority of it has been cleared in the past. Um, so that's that's an advantage for this site. But yes, um, a pre-development and post-development um, drainage analysis would have to be done. Um, in order to do that, um, you know, I think it was brought up that, you know, I really need to decide on, on what, you know, what you're looking to, to de develop on the lot. You know, how many fields, how much parking, and, and, and that's kind of the fact finding um, position we're in right now is figuring out what the town wants, um, where they want to try to put it on the lot, and then, um, you know, we begin um, you know, engineering it once, once you decide. Um, we are in a kind of a fact finding mode right now, um, you know, with survey, with um, you know, doing test pits out there to see what type of soils we have, um, and, and um, you know, there's survey going on right now, you know, to get the topography there so we can understand better the drainage patterns on the site and what we need to do to mitigate. Thanks, Jesse. Any so comment? from the, the Recreation Commission's perspective and the Select Board's perspective, is it reasonable to say at this point that we are looking for two multi-purpose athletic fields. Is is that fair to say at this point that we are comfortable with that? I mean, yeah, I think that's one of our, our strong goals. I mean, at least from the select board side and and, uh, um, and 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 with that, obviously a place to gather when games are not there. And, you know, you could have, you know, an event, story time telling that, you know, just all kinds of different ideas that we could have a place to gather and, and do, do some things, but yeah. That's uh, primarily, you know, the soccer fields were certainly, or athletic, you know, multiple, multiple sport fields that we could, we could do there. I, I was curious from the public um, or an, anybody else on the meeting from these different designs that you're seeing uh, again, this is a major concept, but just central parking, split parking. Um, you know, I think this was the original kind of design originally. Is there, um, Anybody have any comments on what that looks like? Uh, Trevor or Carolyn, um, the so Patty has her hand up, but could you could I let um, the Deerfield Recreational Department? They had their hand yeah. up yeah. for a second. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Yes. You, Thank you, you Alex. Two analysis here, and um, you probably see her rolling up to the desk on the chair, and <laughs> you can. Sorry, my computer's my. Audio is not working. No problem. I no, you can come home because that wasn't working. So. <laughs> well, thank you for making the effort. Here I am. <laughs> Wait, my mask. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Um, yes, about what we 
wanted on the field. Um, the last, not last year, because of course with the Corolla, we didn't have uh, a lot of teams, but the year before, uh, we did have 11 soccer teams. And we were able to, you know, we have a field here at Memorial, and we have a field at, that we had at Channing Beach, which we are no longer able to use. Right. Um, and that accommodated our, and we do have land up in Old Deerfield, which we put our pre-K program on, um, our softball team and our pre-K soccer and our pre-K baseball. But that field is not big enough for a soccer field at all. Right. Um, and Deerfield Academy, um, Channing Beach not even big enough to put a full size for grade five and six field on. So Deerfield Academy has been providing us with use of their uh, South Meadows field um, for that. So we do really need soccer fields. Um, the large field there that is proposed, we could actually split in two and halfway and um, put two teams on there. We would use grade three, four on that field along with the grade five, six team. We have the entire field. No. Um, and then the smaller field could also be used for a grade three, one grade three, four team, or then we could split that to be used for our grade one and two teams. So yeah. that um, those two fields, we I really feel we need to uh, make some soccer fields. We, you know, and we could also we our field hockey program is very robust. Yeah. Actually, we've done very well with that. It's been we have a, more kids in this area and in, in, in a program I'm offering than we do in some of the towns down below those big towns. Wow. Um, so I mean we could use field hockey over there. I've had a flag football program, um, and ultimate frisbee. We could go do something like that, but. I mean, playing fields, we could really use some, some more playing fields in this area. Yeah. Um, I think we're, they planned on making a walking path mm -hmm. um, around the edge, which I think is a really good idea. Um, and at some point, probably not in the beginning because of, 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 the, of money, but to put exercise stations in too. That's a um, idea. Along the way, I think the, the town people would really enjoy that. I've seen that done down south, and it was very, very well used. And that was just like little areas, little venues that you would yep. stop off and yep. you could do some stretching or yep. they have, pull up. They or... have um, companies make machines yep. that you can put, um, you know, different different types of machines. There's all kinds of different machines out there now. Outdoor durable and yep. yeah, yeah. Okay. So real quick, uh, if any people are familiar with Unity Park up in uh, Turnage Falls, which is absolutely beautiful, um, they have a walking path around the whole complex, and they have like Nautilus stations right there, uh, okay. the exercise equipment right there. So um, that's the kind of thing okay. that I think Sue and I were kind of looking at. Great. Um, Susie, you had talked about um, field hockey being, um, you know, really robust and bigger than other you know, south, southern towns that are larger. Are, what do you project would be our needs moving forward? Are, do you see any trends? Um, obviously, I think there's soccer is becoming more popular um, as a sport versus football. Um, people are concerned about, you know, on football. But um, I was wondering what you project. But we had we've I mean we've had two teams we had a grade um, four five six team with twenty girls, oh. and then we had another program for grade one through three and some fourth graders that were brand new, and I you know I would say two teams that younger program, um, the towns below down below do have traveling teams at that level also. So this was the first year we offered that younger team and um, that younger level. And I, I can see those girls, you know, starting to play against other teams too, needing field, real field space, and not just the practice once a week like they have been doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, but our the older girls, they they practice twice a week, and then they would have games, you know, either 
Friday or I mean Saturday or Sunday, or they have a jamboree. I mean, some we could you know if we had fields like that, we could also do you know a jamboree for field hockey, or we oh, could also you know do jamborees for soccer, and and those make money. They do. You know, once if you have a concession stand and you know with entry fees, those make money. Yeah. The, the other thing I'd like to add, and and when I coached for a lot of years back for Sue, um, we we love to do an end of the year party for all our kids, but with logistics being on different fields, it was hard to do that. So if we had an end of the year soccer party for all our teams where they can get their awards, they can have hot dogs, things like that, in a yeah. central location like that, um, field hockey. So I I think that'd be an an added benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, a, and you know, you've mentioned a storage facility too, and um, I need a storage facility desperately. I mean, I don't really like picking up a bag full of mice, dead mice, yeah, I know. in the spring. It's kind of gross. Yep. And um, there's really, I really not, I don't have enough room for sure. Yep. I'm just really cramped in there, and yep. you know, stuff falls on my head, and I mean, I really, I really have to have something. Yeah. It would really be nice if I had something. So Trevor and Carolyn, if I can jump in for one sec, I know I updated mm -hmm. people that Eagle Brook was willing to provide a pavilion and install it for us, which was amazing. Uh, I don't yep. know if I gave you this update at the last meeting or not, because my days just blend, never mind months yep. or years. Deerfield Academy has committed to building the storage facility, concession stand, and restrooms into oh, one singular building on site. Fabulous. That'd be great. That's great. Very good. Great. Yeah. Oh, there's so a few really hands nice up. Okay. Patty's um, right there. She's, yep, so she's in yeah, a water. Pat, yep. Patty, Annalie, um, Kate, and Rocky. Okay. I'll, I'll go first if you want. Uh, okay. So I was just wondering, has there ever been any uh, interest in lacrosse? Mm. Um, a few people have asked, not, not a lot of interest. No, okay. I mean, I've had like maybe you know, six people in all the time here ask about lacrosse. They, I know they've had, they had a league up in Greenfield, but I think that might have folded. And, um, but I think they play out of Amherst now. Yeah. Yeah. There's but, 10 um, to 15 really, kids that go to Amherst. Okay. Yeah. But, I, I've really not had a lot of people ask about lacrosse. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, Pat, I think, Patty? Hi. Oh, hi there. How are you? Welcome. Good, uh, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I wanted to say, we, first, we want to thank you guys for holding another informational session. Um, we think these are important to be able to hear what's going on. And during today's times of COVID, that can be difficult. Yeah. In sitting back and being able to listen a bit today, it was really nice to be able to see that we are talking about a pavilion, a picnic area for people to be able to use in town because a lot of times you hold functions and there really isn't some place for that. And we're happy to see the trail around it with future talk about other things for athletic training. Is there any possible talk or is there any talk moving in the future about a playground for children? Mm. That's, that's one question that we have. Um, okay. The other question that we ask is, will there be a point for consideration for us instead of a sidewalk going down, a second sidewalk being put in on this side and extending it from Frontier, establishing maybe a raised crosswalk system like you see in the college areas where you hit a buzzer, it lights up and it's a raised crosswalk for students to cross. It's very safe. It's done in a lot of the college towns. Um, it works okay. successfully for them. And for us, I think that's kind of a win-win because it also slows traffic Whoa. down a bit on North Main. Yeah, yeah. So like, like a just like a speed bump kind of raised thing yep. you're talking about. Yeah, okay. yep. it's, it's a speed bump yep. raised thing and, and they'll light up a lot of times. They flash when you go through the different college towns and you see that it, it flashes, but it forces people okay. to slow down. Um, yep. it, it uses our existing crosswalks, of, you know, our existing sidewalk that we have. And I think you could even cross at the crosswalk that's already there at Frontier. So just kind of modify that a bit and then have another one that goes over and it does yep. slow traffic down. So instead of yeah. going through an area and I'm gonna say taking from people's front yards, using that yep. term loosely, but instead of taking from somebody's sure. front yard and putting another sidewalk in, when you still might end up with kids going back and forth across the street, it could solve some of that. 
And it's also a safety thing because again, it'll slow traffic down in this area. Great point. Thank you, Pat. Those are great, great ideas. Yeah. No, I do think a small playground, I mean, I, it's all about the space, but a small playground is a good idea because you know, there's a lot of siblings come yeah. and the parents exactly. like to have. Yeah, you know, and if you're gonna use, if you're gonna let residents in the town use, which that would be my vision, residents in the town being able to use a pavilion and a picnic area, a lot of times they come with children in tow. Or if you're gonna have yep. music in a band shell, they have children in tow. So you kind of need some place that's yeah, gonna yeah. keep them a little busy so that they're not going over <laughs> into Pelican and they're not going off into the woods and into other areas where they probably shouldn't be going. And parents can enjoy why they came. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And I we also like the ideas that the fields will be multi-use versus just soccer. It sounds like there's a lot yeah, of talk yeah. about different sports. So I think that's important. Thank you. Yep. No, we, we want the field to be the field to be multi-use. Def, definitely. Yeah. Uh, whether you use cones or, you know, whether it's field hockey or, or um, soccer with movable goals and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's even like in the spring, if, you, if, if softball wants to get out of, on there and mm -hmm. all around it, if the other fields aren't dry. So it definitely, yeah. I'm a big uh, fan of a multi-purpose uh, field. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask one more quick question? When of we course. get closer yeah, to having more different different concepts to look at, is it possible for either another inv informational uh, session, which I'm sure will be yes, um, or maybe to have some of these potential drawings sent to some of the people in town who might want to see them or have them posted on the website where we can course. look at the different proposed drawings? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. We'll definitely get them. We can get these up online too. And then, um, and yes, I, I, I fully envision more um, information sessions, especially as we get closer to, to having a real plan to do and, you know, hear from residents on, you know, where things are actually going to be um, if we can make this happen. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Great idea. Thank, thank you, Patty. It was great. Thank you. Patty. Thanks. Yep. So I think the goal tonight was. Oh, who else do we have? Uh, is Anna Lee got her hand up? Yep. Hi, Anna Lee Wolf, Cool South Deerfield. <laughs> obviously. Hey um, my question might be more, and it's really a comment, and more an issue of semantics rather than um, the, the design concept. To me, this feels like, it doesn't feel so much like a town park. It feels like two sports playing fields surrounded by a walking path. And as there was a comment made earlier about Unity Park, certainly as Patty was just talking about playgrounds. I mean, I would not see this that if we're really talking about a town park, I wouldn't be I wouldn't see it as a small playground. I, I think of a park. I think of play equipment, picnic areas, places for informal pickup activities. And in fact, you know, as I look at this plan to some degree, whether or not that would mean that the smaller of the fields would then be changed into a park so again unless you know if we're talking about semantics maybe we're talking about town playing fields and that's what mm -hmm. we're talking about but i kind of don't see this as a town park <laughs> just yeah i mean uh, we we would love it to be twice the size to be able to fit all of those ideas on we are limited in space so um that well, you know you're right the town has to has to kind of decide do we i mean i think the number one thing that we need our playing fields and then those also can be used uh you know they're, they're not just a field it's uh, it's an open space so it can be used for you know other other things when when games aren't aren't going on um i, I wish we could double the footprint um and fit all the things that we wanted nature trails and education spots for our kids and there's so much more we could do um but that's not oh, where we're at today oh, it does seem that the priority is going towards playing fields rather than, as you were saying earlier in the introduction, Jennifer, about having a place for our town and our community come to come mm -hmm. and visit. I mean, I, as a grandma, could not imagine with this concept going with my nine-year-old and five-year-old granddaughters just to walk around the perimeter on a... Yeah, it may not be... It may not be for everybody. You're right. You know, I wish I, we're, we're going to try and make it as inclusive as possible, but some people will find it not enticing and it'll be just whatever others want. It's, it's really hard, you know, with a limited space. 
Well, yeah, we weren't we weren't anticipating um, having to accommodate so much parking. We were intending to use initially. We were intending to use a frontier parking. I'm sorry, Carolyn. Could you repeat that? Yeah, I'm sorry. My 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 um, mic isn't working so well. But we intended originally. The original concept was to use the frontier parking, so that we wouldn't be um, having to use so much space for parking. That's new in the origin, from the original um, concept. We were having a connector and then and then we we wouldn't have had the parking. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is all right. new. Well, I can understand how the parking would be necessary, especially if we want to have, you know, people from other towns coming for tournaments and whatnot. But again, it seems as if the park is being sacrificed for two playing fields, and that's just what it feels like. Yes. Well, and, and really, I guess I mean that's really was the goal originally was the was soccer fields. I mean, so so we're trying to fit the park around the soccer fields. I right. guess that's yeah. and and everything else we can do around that. Um, whatever we can do to bring families together with a pavilion, with a possible you know with a walking trail, with some playground if we can fit that in. Um, it's just it is tight for sure. But we'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll come up with a way. So there's, there's a few more hands. Um, John, yeah, I accidentally sure. muted you when you were trying to speak, I think. So did you want to say something? There he is. He's on, he's on done. No, you're fine, Alex. Yeah, no, I noticed. Uh, I think, again, the goal tonight is to figure out what everybody would like to see in here. So what we're hearing is two multi-purpose athletic fields, Patty uh, with a playground. She's saying at least a small one. Annalise saying mm -hmm. that it should be quite larger this you know is identified as a town park that is possible remember these are only concept drawings so once the select board the recreation commission you uh unite together and agree that five or six different items should be included in this now we can go back to the engineering firm and say okay move and shake show us what our options are how do we like the parking lot we really should ask Judith, we should ask um, John McLaughlin, we should ask Mike and Gail, what parking lot schematic do you like the best? You are the most impacted. So, you know, the band shell, we really should come away tonight with what would we like to see? I understand that it started as soccer fields because we have none. We have really none in Deerfield. Kids are trucked out of town. But this is truly going to turn into a town park so let's make it the best we can we said the playground we'll look into the playground we said two multi-purpose athletic fields we know we need restrooms we can't put people there and put porta potties in there um yeah we really need a professional structure sue has made it crystal clear that she has no we area to store anything so we need storage and that's purpose for a multi-purpose uh perfect for a multi-purpose building let's talk about the parking Mike, Gail, um, Judith, what parking schematic do you really think is going to uh, be best for you? Go ahead, Gail. I see your hand up. Oh, I was on. Um, me and Michael were looking at it. The one, I, I don't know if it was the first, split the fields. where the fields were split and there was a parking lot in the middle. Okay. That uh, looked okay. This one here, where it had the parking, you come in in the parking and was in the middle. Yes. Yep. 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 That's uh, the one. Judith, any feedback on parking in the middle? John McLaughlin, Attorney McLaughlin. Um. I'll have to be honest with you. I have to discuss that with Judith. Um, this is the first time I've seen the parking um, anywhere else other than the first uh, proposal that was set. Um, yeah, I, I, I know we were concerned about um, the noise from the music venue um, being aimed towards the residential. You know, maybe it would make more sense to put the music venue um, facing towards the commercial property and having the bathrooms by the commercial property and the parking in the middle. Um, 
you know, some, something along those lines. And, and maybe, you know, if you do want a, you know, a playground for children and an area, maybe it's one, you know, soccer field and then the rest being a true park, if you're going to call it a park. Uh, maybe it just, uh, you know, after the, the size of the physical um, project was scaled down from your original vision, maybe you have to scale down everything. Instead of saying it's tight, just make everything smaller with smaller space. Yeah, so the band well, shell you're going to notice it is designed on there to make the small athletic field multi-purpose. So that's actually when that small field is not being used, it's a seating area for those concerts, as we know them, on the common. So we move them from downtown on the common where we know there's a true public safety issue, there's a noise issue. There's a quality of life issue, people sitting out there in lawn chairs trying to listen to a gorgeous band. And we move them up here where it's detached and removed and people can truly enjoy themselves. So where we position that ultimately comes into the sun and its effects on um, everybody and their viewing pleasure, but it's also to mitigate the noise with the neighbors. And I know our engineers have talked to me about that, Tom and Jesse, are looking at multiple different thoughts with it. And I think there will be more to come with that as time progresses. So that is absolutely on our radar. Um, and, you know, going back to the concert on the common, I know a couple of the neighbors are nervous about the noise. Sue, can you tell us what time the concert on the common gets over? Well, they go from 6.30 to 8 o'clock on a Friday night, you know, three or four Friday nights in July. That's it. That's all I've had. Yeah, so every, everything's over and people have departed by 8.15, 8.20, is that fair to say? Yeah, 8.30, 8.30 at the latest. Hey, Chief, I just want to make a comment real quick, please. Sure. Um, that, the the uh, parking proposal in the, in the middle, I just have a couple of concerns. Um, number one, maybe kids and families going from one field to another, for example, during a jamboree and cars are backing up and coming in. And I think it takes away some of the playing fields for people, for spectators view, people could actually be standing in between two fields right there. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of personally against the parking in the middle, more, more a safety, especially with numerous games going on. And if you're gonna go back and forth between the field and kids walking around and cars coming in and out. That's just, that's just my, my thought. Yeah, and stay with that one for a second, Trevor. Um, okay. Gail and Michael, what do you think of this one? We hate that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, no, no, that, it, it showed up slow. Um, Oh, yes, I've been flipping between them. I don't know. Um, we still, that's not as bad. It's not wrapped, oh, sorry, that's not work. completely wrapped around our property. Like, so it's not as can you bad? Hear me? Yeah, I'm just yes, walking, that gives not us, as bad. That gives us a lot more usable space on that property as a whole. Yep, and even if we pull up those bus At parking least. spots another little bit from your property and scale it down a tad bit do you think that that could conceivably work Is well, this, my, uh, my screen went away i can't oh I can can't you see, see can anybody see anybody see anything let me just i'm going to stop sharing and then share again hang on one sec thank you trevor i'm sorry to make you do this no that's okay i might be messing things up here okay you got it back trevor there we go. Okay. Okay. I wish I could zoom it in, but I think that's about as all I, yeah. all I can do. Yeah. So Gail and Michael, you see those long spaces in there um, for the bus? There's two two spaces that almost adjoin the Abravites right on the back side of your property. If we push those up another 20, 30, 40 yeah. feet, do you think that would be reasonable? You mean away from us or next to us? Away from you. They push that back. They're meaning taking this and pushing it back. Yeah, that'd be better. That would give you yeah. an offset off your property at a pretty decent distance. 
Do you do you mean that uh, way the parking lot isn't wrapped around us? Yeah. Right. Right. I, I, okay. Um. Yeah. I tend to think not that we wouldn't want to split. I mean, we just are seeing this for the first time tonight. Um. You know, it was just emailed to us at four o'clock, but. Um, I think the split parking lot is not such a good it's from a long term safety, just not kind of safe. But it also breaks up our usable space. You know, if we're going to have a lot of people or, or some of them this one, want to spread out. This one does seem to give the most, you know, park atmosphere here. You know, if we can pull this away from here a little bit down the bottom. Um, you know, and, and then any music sound kind of goes this way out to train track right. instead of, you know, towards neighbors. Um, and then and then it gives us a lot more flexibility out here. And then, you know, possibly there's there's, you know, playground area over here or, rec, you know, like storage and concession stuff. Um, it just seems like the most favorable one I've seen so far. I think the original just look through these a second. Um, That was sidewalk. This one, I think, was just it felt too much. I mean, we'd love to have parking, but I mean, originally we had parking down here, um, and we had a you know a small pathway through, um, and that saved all of this space. But now having to do the parking here, um, I just think this takes up so much of it. I mean, it does give us a lot of space over here, um, but you know we have to think of you know the neighbors and and where we're going to be. It just feels like. Um, this one seems to be more park-like near the neighbors to me. I don't know. And if we can edit that a little bit too, maybe. Yeah, we, we could, we could start with that plan. Um, yeah. Dave Wolfram is still on. Dave, have you heard anything? Um, have you, um, or have any thoughts? Well, I'm not in favor of the split because of the safety issues with the small kids running back and forth. Right. Yeah, I, I'm, that's my concern. The the drawing that Trevor's got up right now has been the most favorable for me. Yeah. Um, and I like the idea where the band shell and everything is. It, it makes sense. Um, I like the picnic area. And, you know, since we lost the Dwyer lot, you know, this has been a really a well thought out plan to get the town gathering again where well, we haven't since we lost the door a lot. Yeah. Over you know, 20 years, 25 years. You know, and I keep on thinking, you know, for the 350th, we're going to need an area. Yeah. Well, we would certainly hope that or we would like to have, have some of this. We're losing Carolyn. Um, I Kate, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, and, and yeah there's a few hands up. Yeah, so. hi. Hi, Kate. Thanks. Welcome. How is everyone? Good. Well, I, I think this seems like it's really happening. And so I just hope that the engineers, designers are using or thinking about sustainable design principles like bike racks, water bottle filling stations, solar panels for a multi use building. Uh, maybe right. even like composting toilets. I know it's kind of radical, but you know, they're <laughs> like, seriously, if you go to like the rest stop on the Vermont public through, you know, yep. the highway, they have like actual like ways to digest human waste that is very, um, does it right on site. So rather than messing with wetlands and sewers, it might be a good way to go. One more thing, rain gardens for absorbing yep. storm water. So, um, great idea. I have here, Kate. Huh? Deerfield is the first town yeah. in the state to develop the green infrastructure and climate resiliency policy. So, we will definitely be building and whatever we do with that in mind for sure. Um, and I just one more thing that I really like the, the interpretive or the, the walk around the, the most wooded and most nature -y thing that could be would get my most support. <laughs> Thank great. you. Great. That's great. 
Yeah, the thank north, you for that. North side is open. The south side, I believe, in one of the schematics I looked at, Jesse and Tom have it going through the wood line. Okay. Um, and, and I, I can only see four boxes at the yeah. moment. Ma, uh, I got a yeah, hand. So Ma, else? Um, Jennifer, Greg, um, maybe Rocky and Lori. Hi, I'm Ma Swedland, um, and I'm sure I'm behind the curve on a lot of these conversations. But it seems to me that the reason that we needed all those parking spots was because of a grant that we didn't get. Um, so I want to know if we can have fewer parking spaces and then use Frontier. I mean, the Frontier students are going to have to walk over there. Can't parents walk over there also? Um, so, MA, and make them that parking lot smaller? MA, originally, uh, when, when we had initial ideas were to have the parking here, yeah. down on the bottom at Frontier, and we had a safe passage here you know, we were hoping to purchase um, this yeah, property no, just to, yeah, to get I, a safe path. I'm not that through. far behind the curve. I got that. Oh, okay, and then we then we could limit, you know, how much parking was here. Right. And it, it didn't have anything to do with the grant. Um, so there was no so, but aren't this, where, How are the students at this point in time? Aren't they plan? Aren't don't they have to walk along um, North Main to get there? They're going to have to at this point. Yes, so because we I'm don't have access. Is it if parents can also can park at Frontier or some, you know, as an overflow parking, you could have some parking at Frontier and people as like, as the students do, can also walk along the, the path, you know, that whatever sidewalk or whatever system you have for students to make them, make it safe for them, you'd also make it safe for other people to walk. Um, and uh, and and it just would make more space, it seems to me, and would be That's a, a better way of doing it. Well, I, I'd like to too, but I think you know a lot of that has to do with you know frontier and what they have going on for games at the time and how much space they have in an MOU. Would they would they allow us to do that with them? You know, we're, we're going to have to work with them as they. You know, I think that the idea was that they would maintain these fields so that they could have use of it maybe in the MOU that we could we could request um, when possible to use their parking as well to, to deal with some of the overflow that we would have. Definitely a discussion to have. Thank you, MA. Yeah. So Jennifer, if. Yep. Hi. Um, so I was just, I wanted to concur with the ideas of using the compostable toilet and the solar panels um, by grass. Great those types of things. Um, I really like the fact of having the walking trail. Um, and one of the other thoughts I had was making sure, I know we mentioned this at a prior meeting, was permeable um, the driveway yeah. or the parking lot. So that way that, you know, that the water doesn't pool up and go along to the other neighbor's yards. But also um, in the back, the far, after the big field where the two yep. uh, water areas are, is that going to be accessible or is that like a tree line that's uh, barring it off on the other side of the walkway, walking path there? There would, there would be, a, I would imagine some safety uh, apparatus for, I mean, this is a guess of mine, but it's safety apparatus fencing or something because of the train tracks. Um, but then right. I, I do believe that this would be uh, some wetland area and it may, may be somewhat accessible, but it, it, I think it slopes back here a little bit. John might know this property a little better than me. Do you yeah, want to, do you the want to Lake Green is actually a uh, wetland uh, replication area. Okay. And, yeah, then there's two detention ponds and in, in where the, um, you know, that's all in stormwater management plan. Those will change in size, shape, design, whatever it may be, depending on how far that field goes back. Right along right. the edge of that field is a, a very straight line on the edge of the walking path. That very okay. straight line is actually a catch fence that's probably 25 feet in the air that will grab any balls that go flying past the field. So that right. way, okay. um, you know, the kids, uh, even the adults using it in the future for athletic events aren't chasing it down in detention areas or wetlands. We ultimately yep. don't want those wetlands impacted other than the frontier students studying them 
And we have a couple uh, faculty there that are interested in partnering and doing programs out there. Well, we the reason I asked there. is because um, being part of the um, 350th committee, you know, we've talked about different options and um, with the Friends of Deerfield nonprofit we re that was recently formed, um, we've been considering having a walking, you know, uh, a, a stone garden or something like oh. that to commemorate the 350th. And nice. with the park coming up, not knowing, you know, the definitive timeline, but in knowing if maybe in the schematics or the drawings of the engineers of maybe implementing, um, whether it be the rock garden or the path where people could purchase, um, you know, the bricks instead of in the town center, um, mm -hmm. it could be possibly done at, at the park here, um, you know, at this facility, because it will, um, you know, bring the community together and also help, um, you know, bring, have something to memorialize the 350th. Um, so when people come through the park or through, you know, through the area, they could, they could also have that. Um, so that was just a thought and seeing the schematic, not knowing whether or not you could put one at the far end, but it sounds like mm -hmm. it might be better off to, you know, in one of the other areas and maybe on the other, the south side of the walking path there mm -hmm. in between that um, area. Sorry, I can't point to yep. it on my screen, but uh, <laughs> like okay. the, middle, the middle box, I don't know what, if that's a building like south of that. I don't know if yep. that's open area. area. Those are actually um, bleachers. Yep. yep. For spectators. Yeah. Just, yep. just something, um, you know, it's just a thought because if you have more area and this could, you know, this is potentially a fundraiser for our 350th um, and doing that there. So just, I just love the idea, there, John. The only thing we've yep. got to focus on is to make sure we identify it with our notice of intent because okay. anytime we're within a hundred feet of wetlands, Yep. We need that identified in the NOI to the Conservation Commission to say, hey, we're going to be working in this area, and this is what we're going to be doing. So the whole plan is going to have to go in front of them. So we yep. want to identify that with our engineering firm. But if the okay. select board's all about it, I think it's an amazing idea. What is the uh, square footage of that area? Because obviously we wouldn't want to um, do anything to be detrimental to the wetlands. And if we found a, a better spot for it, mm -hmm. whether it be bordering along the north part of the parking lot, you know, in between the fields or somewhere that's not, um, you know, where the rocks or, or pave, pavers wouldn't get too damaged. Um, Cause that would be the big thing. Engineers ultimately play with the concepts and bring us back maybe one, two or three concepts. Like, so the goal tonight is to say, okay, we agreed on two athletic fields. We agreed mm -hmm. that there needs to be restrooms on site we agreed that um, we are gonna go ahead and put a pavilion in. It's to give them a list so now they can go ahead and say, okay, they like this parking design. Now, how can we fit those two fields and everything else in the best interest? So if you can get me a size that you're thinking, that would sure. help, help our engineering firm. Yep, yeah, I have, I have some information from a company that, we, um, that I had reached out to. They're out in Eastern Mass. Um, and their pricing has been great and they, you know, repair the stones or pavers. So it, it's just, you know, I, a lot of interest too has been um, noted in town through the Deerfield Now page by talking about it there. Um, so a lot of people were interested in purchasing um, that. So it, it could be, you know, a dedication for our 350th, et cetera. Um, but obviously I'll, I'll forward that information to you, John. I think, uh, could I send it to your public email or could you? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So that way you have that and you know what, what it would look like. Yep. The only thing I want to confirm with you is, is do you want it on the outskirts on the walking trail or do you want it so everybody sees it on the main sidewalk next to the parking? Do we want people's names in there every single day for every person walking over or do we want to create and delineate our own little area? I think a nice little separate area would be great. I just don't know, like looking at the, sch the schematics of this plan, where that would be appropriate, especially when trying to right. fit everything that, um, you know, people have requested. Um, right. How about right in front so of the band shell? Yeah. That would be wonderful yeah. or around the band shell. Um, mm -hmm. So, or just somewhere. Yeah. Good. You and I it will work on that. Good. Yeah, okay. we need to be tied in with, you know, existing stuff because of the space requirements, but it's a great idea to kind of fit it in if we could have a separate space grade, if not, 
and we could tie it in with what we have to do already. That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. Great too. Thank you very yeah. much for, um, yeah. for listening to that. I just, a lot of people have been really excited about the 350th and this is a way that people can have a permanent, um, you know, memento of, of whomever yep. they chose to make or purchase for in their honor or memory. So yeah, absolutely. Like great idea. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up, Jennifer. You're welcome, Carolyn. So there's still, there's a few more hands. Um, so okay. Greg, great. Rocky, Lori, and MA, I see you. Nope. Okay. So not okay. Rocky. So Greg, go ahead. If you're still there. I am. Hello. Hi. Hey there. So, so um, I'm a little confused about the order in which things are happening. Um, I have a couple of questions. The first one is, if it's true what the um, Judith Rathbone's lawyer said about the frontage and the town's bylaws prohibit the development of this property, I don't understand why we're going into all this planning and and dreaming if it's not a, it's not a lot we can build on. Um, we don't Greg, have a we don't have a legal decision on that, Greg. So we'll deal with that yeah. another day. But shouldn't we have that decision before we invite all no. the communities no. no. and comments no. and no. you know planning no. and all this money no. being spent on designs? No. Nope. We're good. Why not? Right. Greg, we'll deal with that later on when we have it when we have a a, a legal uh, opinion on it. But we're spending we're spending money when we don't know if we can act on our, you know, this vision. Greg, do you have another question on the design? Um, not about the design, actually. No, I um, wanted to ask a little bit about the history. I um, I was at the two town meetings, the one in the summer, at which um, the initial decision was made to purchase the property. And um, I think the budget at that point for the project was a million dollars. And then between that town meeting and the special town meeting that came after, it went to $2 million. And I wanted to ask um, what the primary reason for that, for the budget being Great. doubled was. We, we had that discussion at another town meeting and, and we had that discussion at other meetings. This meeting today is to find out about designs and what people want and don't want. It's not to, not to litigate how much something costs and when that history happened and all those different votes. It's about it's design and what people want. It's to want. understand, Trevor, it's to understand. You I don't, there, I don't Greg. understand. Greg, you're what? acting like you don't know this discussion. We've had this discussion, you've been at the meetings. You've no, I, I wasn't meeting. at every part of every to, meeting. I'm sorry. Greg, I did not. You have been at annual town meeting, Greg. You've been at annual town meeting where this answer was discussed and the people voted for it. You okay, had well, either voted or voted against it. So you know the answer. Trevor, I, I don't know the answer. I wouldn't be asking. Well, the then question. you either voted for it or not uh, based on the discussion we had there. This is not a meeting to discuss how much the place costs. It's a discussion about what we'd want to see here if we were going to build one here. But I'm asking a, a reasonable Greg, question. Greg, the majority of the cost was related to having to add in parking. Okay, so we don't need to go over this. We're trying to sort this out. Okay, so it was the parking. One, one of the major costs was the additional parking. Okay, thank you. And it, had to do with the fact that we had to change what we intended. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Any other questions? Yep, uh, Lori. Hi, so this is um, very fun as a community to be um, designing a community space. I remember many years ago when we were talking about the common and I have some thoughts about rearranging pieces on the puzzle. I just have to say how um, haunted I am by that blue line down the middle and very curious about what the, the wetlands study will show. Um, you know, I know and Carolyn's expressed it a lot about the whole flooding issue in town. So at the least, 
You know, those are, um, I'm told by my neighbor who's uh, um, an environmental engineer, at the least uh, those trees are 40 years old and I, don't, I didn't count exactly, but I would say there's probably at least 30 of them. I would like to see mature trees planted elsewhere. And I don't know if they can be on the southern edge of the property that's called bordered, bordering vegetated wetlands. I don't know if in that green, darker green spot, there's area for mature trees because it's just a schematic now. It doesn't show whether there's actually trees there. But I would, I would like to see those trees replaced because um, as we all know, the mature trees uptake a lot of water and they sequester carbon and just um, creating some area to store water is not, not the same kind of function. Um, I also wanna repeat what Kate said. I know that um, we are concerned about um, mosquito control and I think it would be really important for these detention ponds to not be detention ponds. Standing water is you know, not, not a good plan. So more of a rain garden type place mm -hmm. that would be maybe it's some interesting plants for students to study. I think that is a really terrific idea. Mm. Um, I definitely- think Lori, we're, we're definitely going with the rain gardens. Um, we don't want retention. Okay, um, it, that's what, I think that's what it says, so. Yeah. Um, well, we, yep. we definitely don't want retention retention ponds in the town because in the future going forward, all that is is mosquito breeding right. ground. Yeah, I knew you knew that. <laughs> <Yep>. I'm just <laughs> st stating the obvious. Um, so just a couple other little thoughts. I'm wondering about whether the band shell could have its back to the parking area and the restroom could be near and concessions be near the picnic area just because mm -hmm. food next to picnic tables and if there is room for a little playground area there maybe the maybe the second smaller soccer field can move north a teeny bit so there's a little bit mm -hmm. more room for the band shell and then if it faces that soccer field it would do what John was talking earlier about allowing that smaller soccer field to be the seating area um, those are those are good th thoughts Lori so you were saying um, the the band shell more kind of where this right kind of over in this area and and then the concessions more over in this area for the picnic area yeah or i i don't know if the um if it yeah and or if the bandstand could have its back to the parking area i mean right I really i wish yep. there didn't need to be quite that much parking obviously but um right two other quick thoughts so i'm wondering if the stones that jennifer is talking about which i think is a lovely idea could actually be the walkway the walkway yeah. could be made of commemorative stones. I've seen that in other places. The only thought about that, um, Lori, is I guess for a certain period of time, they'll repair them um, if they're damaged. But if they're in an area that's continuously like snow blown or um, walked over, they may wear out over a period of time. So that was the only concern um, because, you know, maybe they'd only last five, 10 years or something. Um, and I believe they're guaranteed for a certain period of time, um, but not if they're in a high traffic area is what I understand. I'll have to double check um, with the information that I got from the company. Um, that's the only reason I had wanted them to be a little separate uh, just so they didn't get worn out as much. I, I think one of the really, I mean, especially with the warmer winters, we wanna have the walking path, you know, trail to be open um, because it can be open most, you know, with these winters that we're having open quite a bit. So um, probably that wouldn't be a place. For I wonder about um, ice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the, anybody to have to maintain making it um, ice free in the winter, certainly not with salt. Yeah, but, oh no, I don't mean with salt. But, you know, we do have the potential you know, with these winters. There really isn't much um, coverage right now. Okay. Lovely. Felt um, and then the last thought is, I, I wonder if, um, I, how, if, how we might talk to Pelican about maybe using their parking lot for overflow and what the mm -hmm. area is, you know, if there's any smidgen of extra land um, bordering in the, the smaller soccer field that we could purchase from them. Um, it's a good thought. We had, there was yeah, some- Yeah, very good thought, Lori. We had been thinking about um, different ideas like 
you know, a little sliver here and a little sliver there might pop up. Okay, yep. thank you. Oh, thank you for those great ideas. That was great. So, MA has her hand up. Yeah, I do. Yes. Hi there. I, uh, I w there was mention of solar. And I'm a really mm. big advocate for solar on parking lots. Um, I'm a real big advocate for solar. Um, yes, you are. <laughs> and we thank you for that. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's, uh, I mean, the Energy Committee has been thinking about solar uh, possibly on school parking lots, solar on the DPW parking lot. And, mm. and as you're building something like this, putting solar on some portion of the parking lot would be an excellent plan. And it Solar could over the police cruisers and your next grant, I would be all about <laughs> to block them from the weather. Yep, <laughs> MA, hint, hint. I'm, I'm, I'm paying That's attention. All right, sounds good. It's a great idea, MA, thank you. The problem is, is that the green communities folks haven't been paying for solar under most circumstances. So oh. we got to figure out a different way to get grants. Yeah, yep. Some of this to this parking lot where it is just um, this is all wooded tall pine so not really great for sun i don't yeah, think but, but over in this part x which uh oh that's which, my arrow not i your can't arrow. see your i can't see your cursor <laughs> <but>. <laughs> what are uh, you thinking on the on the northern part the, the, those parts yeah. all along the northern section oh this this the the, the northern half okay yeah. <laughs> good thought I mean, yep. just some portion. I mean, it, it's so it's expensive. So you wouldn't want to do the whole parking lot by any means. I yeah, see. Reached out okay. to Pelican, and the problem is, is they have so many employees that that lot is uh, filled quite frequently unless we used it on a low point. But I actually did want to talk to them to see if we could acquire a slight parcel just north of that small athletic field. Mm -hmm. Yep. And to alleviate and just have an overflow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Raymer says Hardig Industries, 151-11. Uh, maybe the walking path could even go into that wooded area. That would make it a little more interesting. Yep. On the south side or where are you talking about, Lori? On the, on the north side, on the, the Pelican side. Yeah. If they would let us, that'd be amazing. I just, I've got to get a call back from one of the vice presidents from California. So, <laughs> yep. Ever since it went from local heartache to uh, to Pelican, it's not as easy with the uh, the upper echelons. Oh, uh, can I also ask real quickly, um, what what why we don't have? Um, is it because of uh, the change in ownership from Channing Beat? Will the, those fields be available to the town? Have we talked with Tree House Brewing? I don't know what stage things are at, but. Um, yeah, they're not um, opposed to allowing us to use them. The problem with the field over there is anybody that's wet. ever used it, even after a routine rain event, there was two Under inches water. of standing water. Yeah, you're up to your ankles. Yeah. Yeah. I and, wasn't and able to use that. Literally yeah. was that bad where they'd get mowers stuck over there and have to tow mowers out, just routinely mowing over there. So as we engineer this site, we recognize the fact that, you know, depending on what Jesse and Tom found when they dug those 12 test pits. They, this whole thing, we may have to bring in some sand and build it up slightly and engineer it with those uh, rain garden areas. So there are the runoffs, but there's also the high points as well. So we don't run into that because we can't have ruts in fields constantly. I mean, you get into yeah. field maintenance and then you've got a down cycle of field for a season, overseed it. And then we start talking about fertilizer and then Lori up the street starts screaming at me and shaking her head. No, <laughs> She's already shaking your head. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It, yep. And again, Treehouse, Treehouse is going to have a lot of activities on their property, so yeah, it might not always be available. We're kind of waiting to see what you know what they what they have for designs and ideas. And I know they're very anxious to work with the town and want to help us where they can. Um, we just got to see what their plans are and what what they're interested in. But as Sue said, yeah, you're up to your ankles even on a on a sunny day out there. It can be can be pretty muddy. It's gotten really bad. It's gotten bad. Yeah. I think I mentioned it at a previous meeting, but the uh, there's three owners of Treehouse Brewing. Uh, Damien texted yep. me this morning. He asked if Frontier Track is open to the public. 
So he and I were conversing this morning, but on top of that, um, and I think Trevor was present when he said this to me, but he said, uh, the town park, what do you guys need? Because yeah. we will pay. They for want it. to help. Yep. They want to help. Yep. So. He said, do you want us to put in the pavilion? I said, well, it's funny you say that because Eagle Brook just offered a couple months ago. He goes, well, John, just tell us what you need and we'll do it. Yep. So I think we'll have, we'll have a good partner in town for sure. Can I just ask a quick question? Um, just looking at the property line and stuff, what is to, per I know you've got the water, um, the wetlands areas looked at, but what is the, hearing you talk about the treehouse area with Channing, former Channing B, what's the water table like on this property currently? And what's to prevent it from flooding underneath where Frontiers Fields currently are if it goes down further? Because um, I live... Um, like, you know, not too far down the railroad line, go further south. Um, and we have like, you know, along the area, there's like a culvert that drains into the bloody brook now um, that runs alongside, which is, you know, which is fine. It's we clean it out, we do what we need to. But is the runoff at all um, going down the side of the railroad into flooding any of the current fields there? So we're the double-edged sword. We have the amazing agricultural soil because we are the Pioneer Valley. But yep. with that, we also have the high water table that's attributed with that amazing soil. Yep. So mm -hmm. we've got to wait for our engineers to tell us where is the water going? How do we mitigate it? Do a stormwater management plan, which I'm told usually is like two to 600 pages. It's unbelievable from an engineering perspective. How do we retain that water on site and then get it back up into the air where it cycles back down to natural rainflow. That's okay. way beyond my pay grade, but <laughs> yep, when it comes out, anybody's welcome to pick it apart. Yeah, no, I just ask because like my front yard is lower than our house and it always floods up, especially when we get the high rain and just looking yeah. at this and not knowing um, how low or what level it's at, just, um, that's the only thing that concerns me, but it, obviously yep. they know what they're doing. Um, so thank you. Well, one, yep. one thing that's really important to remember is not pervious surface for the most part. And, yeah. Um, you know, we're hope, hopefully we'll be water well. That is a huge concern. Now, any, anything um, additional does in fact water. Carolyn's mic's cutting out very, very bad. But, you know, if we were paving this with a, a non-permeable surface and we had to push that water somewhere else, it'd be a, you know, a massive engineering, um, as well as the athletic fields, all of this is naturally going to drain as it has been. So some of the water is going to be moved in different areas, uh, all up to the engineering, but we're actually not putting a factory there. We're, we're not putting a brick, um, huge, massive structure there with parking for 300 employees. So we're, we're dealing with fields, which I'm not an engineer. I'm hoping the impact is much less and it permeates straight down and it doesn't mm -hmm. impact Gail and Michael because I'll be on, forever on their hit list. So, <laughs> yeah. No, the goal is to make sure they're not impacted definitely by the water. Um, um, what, one of the comments I've seen people make of, is like, having an ice skating rink in town is that something you've thought about maybe using one of the fields for when the winter comes we did it well for south deerfield fire department used to set it up right next to the elementary school where you see a baseball field now when that was dwyer's lot and mm -hmm. they would bring fire trucks over and they would fill it up in december and there was an ice skating rink over there for three to four months in the winter can we bring that back yep we certainly can discuss it as long as there's people willing to do it great um, so Anna Lee had her hand up. Uh, hand is down now. It was just answered. Oh. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay. I think we're good. Anybody else? So would anybody like me to recap what's on my master list here as I'm jotting everything down? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. I just, I just joined in and I didn't get any of it. Oh. It took me a while to get on a Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Oh. Who is this? Uh, it's Mike Martin. Hey, Mike. Okay. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. So we got our neighbor across the street on here. Good. So right. 
Um, Patty brought up that she would ultimately like at least a small playground for the children because even the older kids when they play, they all have younger siblings. Uh, Anna Lee mentioned that if it's going to be a town park, it really should be more of a larger playground, not a small. Uh, the band shell, we've talked about positioning for mitigation of noise for the neighbor, neighbors, as well as an area that's multi-purpose with one of the athletic fields. We've talked about restrooms, a pavilion, two multi-purpose fields, a walking trail that's handicap accessible. We've talked about uh, under green energy, bike racks. We want to encourage people to use this parking lot for biking and not um, use Sugarloaf Mountain. If you're gonna go out on 15 road bikes through Hadley, I would prefer they park up here and leave those spots open at Sugarloaf Mountain. We've talked about water filling stations, uh, permeable surface. If we're gonna pave uh, handicapped parking spots, you know, permeable surface versus non-permeable. We want that water to go straight yep. down. We've talked about replanting trees, um, replacing those trees up that center line uh, that will ultimately have to be taken out. We've talked about rain gardens and not detention ponds. And we've talked about that people would like to see solar on top of the multi-purpose building that would be restrooms, concession stand and recreation storage. Uh, Carolyn, Trevor, Sue, anybody, what did I miss? Um, I think no, that was just picnic area, John. Um, there was a mention of picnic area. And I, I think that, um, you know, that's a social gathering kind of place. So I think that's important. Can I, can I, we, we also talked about my contention that you can't build anything here and that you said that we're just going to continue on until I hear from your lawyer, but you're not paying That's for the correct. lawyer. That's yep. so just so the neighbor knows that too. Have we, yep, have thanks, we talked John. to, have we done any studies on the traffic flow and, and study for safety for our children and sidewalks and all that other good stuff? So no, none of that. We're not there yet. Oh, Okay. Yet, Mike. When are we going to be there? <laughs> when when we decide on what we're going to do. Because that's yeah, really another meeting or two at least. We have yeah, at least another couple meetings. Um, uh, we have to ideas be... tonight, and we're going to move forward with some of those ideas. Okay. Is this uh, the so, ideas are just concerning inside and not the surrounding areas? Uh, I would think you would we, want to start outside in. So Mike, one of the things discussed tonight was elevated crosswalks, one from the high school over south of your property, and then one elevated crosswalk coming in at the actual driveway entrance with actual crossing lights. Um, those are great traffic calming effects. The downside that I've heard from people that deal with them quite frequently is the exhaust sounds on the vehicles, that they slow down but then a lot of them will rapidly accelerate. And at times it can, uh, it can get uh, a little concerning on behalf yeah, of the we have, we, we have what you call the quarter mile stretch here. And I see it all the time. I'm always hanging out my window, getting some fresh air. And it's just, it's, it gets nasty. I'm, a, I'm afraid for my son, just watching him. I'm always, mm -hmm. you know, paranoid, you know, stay away from the road, stay on the sidewalk, make sure you look at, you know, these cars are whipping by. Yeah, my cruisers are up there all the time. I also think Anna Lee is holding her hand up. Yep, I see. Um, you may have mentioned, John, I think we also talked about actually reducing the number of parking spaces and also whether or not we could do overflow parking or additional parking at Pelican instead. And then one other one other item, John, was, you know, up here where we have a picnic area, you know, at least in this concept design, it, maybe we would flip flop the band shell with the concession stand. So picnic was kind of more near uh, the concession, so people got food and had a place to sit and eat, um, versus you know, vice versa. So, just an idea on that. Um, let's see. I, I see if I had anything else that was there. Uh, well, we had a um, Jennifer had talked about yeah. the separate area for um, you know, some kind of paper. Yeah for rock garden or pavers, um, and that's yep. something I'm going to forward to John so he has the size to give to the designers. And a possible composting toilet, I think was, and I think you mentioned toilets. So, <laughs> Chief, I was trying to ignore that one. Yeah, was, I know. I'm trying was, to bring it back up. <laughs> was the grant? Is there any update on the grant? Yeah, we did not get the grant. Okay. Yep, we're looking at a so, separate one right now. So, what's our what's Plan B for that? Plan B is the money's been fully allocated through the town. 
the grant is a, a reimbursement if we're able to get it. Um, okay. Yep. And unfortunately, so Carolyn there. knows it in, in intrinsically is Deerfield has the 17th richest zip code in the state. And when you 14, apply for grant, 14th, huh? 14th, 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 14th richest yep. zip code in the state, which I found out the hard way really doesn't help us get grants. We're trying well, to we're get, trying. It. we're trying to fix it. I hope the flooding stops because um, my yard is 90% underwater. Pretty yeah. much you, I know right. the bloody brook below you goes right through my yeah. front yard. My driveway goes across it on Wheatley Road. Yeah, we have a problem with the, that little culvert that's in the 130. It's too small to handle. It's all backed up. It's all bottlenecked right there. There's a few of them. There's a few of them like that. It's just horrible. It's horrible. We're getting there one at a time. Is it across the street, Mike, or is it just? It, no, it's 130. It, it all bottlenecks. They got a little culvert, you know, and the water can only go in so, you know, only flow so much. And it just backs it all up. My yard is, every time it rains, I panic. My sub yeah. was off that last uh, couple of storms there. The one after everything melted, you know, the snow and then it melted. Yep. Yeah, I did yeah, a lot of rain. In my front yard. I get water in my oh, garage. No. It was all the way up, about a quarter up my driveway. Um, we're we're definitely concerned about the water in Bloody Brook. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that this this beautiful park, that this park doesn't flood because. Okay. Yep, we are too. Okay. Anything else? Sorry. Hi, this is Darren Gray. Oh, hey, Darren. My hand. Hi, everybody. Um, just hearing the talk about the drainage, like, I, I don't, this isn't that complicated of a drainage design. Like, I don't have many concerns about that. I, people are talking about no detention ponds. If you go all rain garden, it's going to increase how much space you need to use for drainage. You can okay. design detention ponds that do not hold water. They slowly release it and there's nothing left in the end. So I'd, okay. I'd recommend like a combination of detention ponds and rain gardens and just make sure they're designed so that they don't retain water. They detain, let it go. Um, for the parking lot, I'd, I'd hate to see anything gravel. I don't, I'd, I'd look for a combination of uh, pervious pavement in the parking spaces and then impervious yep. in the drive aisles. Um, you see okay. that in some spots mm -hmm. and it works really well. It does all just sink into the ground, but the, the pervious doesn't wear as well on, on the main drive lanes. Amen. Okay. Um, so that'd be an approach. Hopefully we can afford it because I'd hate to see <clears throat> just maintenance issues there if we can't get pavement down yeah. of some kind. I know, I know we did, Darren. I know we looked at that when we were looking at the uh, trying for that grant for Frontier and the Leary lot of doing that kind of thing where we had like a more solid where you drive and then where you park was uh, pervious. Exactly. So, um, right. Yeah, if we could tie that in. Um, okay. Because you think gravel would be not advisable. Is that the idea? Just look at what Mount Sugarloaf was like. That's what you'll end up with. Yeah. 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 Um, you're right. Then you lost your car in there. I love the soccer fields. We certainly need them. And I'd love to see a basketball hoop in that parking lot too. We do not yeah, have we've heard that other places. In town. Yeah. I think Sue has mentioned that, that she really would, would really has a need for a basketball. So we should put that on the list too. Yes, it's a low cost item, but it'd be great. So that's all I yep. got. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much for that input. Appreciate it. Thank you, Darren. That was good input. Um, is there any, nope. any anybody else? Down, is oh, there anybody you, else? John. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. We're gonna schedule at least one more next month. Um, is there an email for this or? Is there a way to sign up for it? Because I didn't get, I wasn't notified. I was actually notified by a fellow neighbor. Um, well, you can send me an email, Mike, and I can add you. I have like 30 or 40 people in town that are interested that I just send a mass email out to, and I'm more than happy to include you. Okay, so send an email to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yep. Sure. And I, right. just, I just send out a blanket email to everybody and say, hey, this is coming up next week. Please be on, whether it's positive, negative, doesn't, you know, it all matters. Um, Say it. Well, yep. it all matters. You're, you're right. <laughs> um, it looks like an off Tuesday or Wednesday week is the 16th and 17th. So if we have the information available, in other words, if the engineers are able to do it, I'd like to see us schedule another meeting 
the 16th or 17th range, if we could, of February. Okay. I'm not okay. sure. It might be a little fast. Um, so then we would go to the following off week. It was, um, which would be like the first week of March. Yeah. Okay. I'll just send the email. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, so thank you all for coming tonight and, and, and your ideas and we'll keep rolling on here. Um, thank and, you uh, so much, everybody. I'll give, really. I'll give a this motion is... to adjourn Carolyn. Yes. Um, uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank all you, right. Dave. I'll Thank third you. it. <laughs> all those, all, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor, go ahead. Aye, Trevor Aye. McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. <laughs> Aye, Carolyn Ness. All right. All well, right. thank you, Thanks everyone. You yeah, we really night. appreciate it. Good night.